When you walk into the museum, you step into a world of high-tech art. But you can see how it, the projections overlap. A giant wall of colorful animation lures you and challenges you to look a little closer at the 3D images. It's no wonder the artist behind all this is often called the rock star of the digital art movement. Jennifer Steinkamp has been one of the pioneers of 3D animation and she creates site-specific installations using computers and digital projectors. Jennifer Steinkamp's name is internationally known. Her digital creations have even been used by rock music legend U2, and you can see why. Step into any of her pieces and just try to find a seam in this digital projection. The work is seamless, so they should see where the, two, the three projectors that create the work come together. Can they find the seam where it all disappears? Because they'll find while they're walking through the room, their shadow will temporarily disappear. And that's because the artist has created this seamless illusion with several projectors. It's an example of technology pushing boundaries, forcing us to ask ourselves the question, how do we experience this information age? That experience of being a participant as well as a viewer is one of the main things that I think people will take away from looking at all these different kinds of digital art projects. Steve Dietz helped organize a first-of-its-kind festival in San Jose called Zero One, weaving technology into art. Digital technology is affecting everything, including art media, and so artists are, of course, responding to the tools that are around them, whether that's a cell phone or a computer or a, t or a, a word processing machine. I love the globes. The globes are really a wonderful kind of way to talk about data and how that gets overlaid on the world and different migration patterns, different pollution levels, different levels of economic development, and a way of mapping it that people are very comfortable with. The globe exhibit showcases interesting social and health-based trends affecting the human race. In another room stands an unusual statue made entirely of the objects we've used to communicate with one another during the last century and beyond. The exhibits have many faces, pointing to the global significance of our connectiveness, presenting it all in a fun, artistic manner that we can understand. Technology is even influencing how we learn about art. In fact, you can have your own personal museum guide if you have a cell phone. It's so easy. It's so easy. Personal audio guide to the San Jose Museum of Art. We currently have audio available so you hear a little greeting uh -huh. by oftentimes the director or somebody at the museum and then when you want to listen to an item about a specific piece you just press that number that corresponds with that item the audio starts playing if you're interested you'll hear the whole item description it's like having your own personal tour guide it's like having somebody walk with you it's and then if, if you're bored with what you're looking at you just touch another number and off you go and you listen to that I love it People love the idea of using their own device, their own cell phone. They're comfortable with it. They know how it works. And they almost always have it with them in their purse or their pocket. So they just take it out wherever they are in the park or the garden or the museum, see the number, punch it in, and hear the audio. Infant mortality is a good indicator of a population's well-being. The audio tour is yet another bright idea, proving that technology and art can work together to entertain and inform us and the Silicon Valley is a natural fit for this showcase.